Hello, my name is Brandon Hughes, and I'm a director of patient access in Somerset, Kentucky. I was a registered Republican for my entire life, and I've always supported Republican candidates, both on the statewide and national level. All of that changed, however, when Donald Trump became president of the United States. I ascribed to the anyone but Trump mindset during the 2016 Republican primaries. I hopped around as far as who I would support until it became evident that Donald Trump would ultimately become the nominee. Heading into the general, I really wrestled with what I planned to do in November. Sitting out wasn't an option because I've always been a firm believer in the importance of Americans exercising their civic duty and voting. I contemplated voting third party. I contemplated writing in John Kasich. But then email gate happened. I felt this gave me an out or perhaps an incentive to vote for Donald Trump because it painted Hillary Clinton, who I already had an unfavorable opinion of in an even more negative light. I ultimately voted for Donald Trump because I naively bought into this drain the swamp messaging that he was running on. And I thought it might be actually good for a change to have someone on the outside of Washington in the White House. I mean, it worked out well with Ronald Reagan, so maybe it'll happen again. Not so much. I have never regretted a choice in my entire life, more so than my decision to vote for this man. I actually regretted it very early in his term as the Charlottesville very fine people on both sides comment repulsed me. Politics and public service have always been my biggest interest. I majored in public administration and public policy in college, and I work in healthcare access. So staying abreast of politics and government policy is something I've not only enjoyed over the years, but it's also helpful for me to be informed of these topics in my profession. I live in a rural area in Kentucky. So needless to say, most people here are Trump supporters. I stayed mostly silent during Trump's first term simply because speaking out against the president in this area of the country triggers the vilest of reactions from his loyalists. His response to the COVID-19 pandemic, however, is too important for me to just stay on the sidelines. Our national approach to this pandemic has been a complete and utter failure of disastrous proportions. He downplayed the virus for months, assuring Americans that our risk remained very low. He allowed our public health experts to release guidelines on how to safely navigate the crisis and save as many lives as possible, only to then go on Twitter and encourage his supporters to storm the capitals of states ran by Democratic governors and demand that they bypass his own administration's guidelines. Instead of following trusted health experts, he follows conspiracy theories. Instead of setting up a national strategy of testing and contact tracing like other developed countries, he advised that the solution to the pandemic was to just stop testing. Quote, if we stopped testing, we wouldn't have any cases. That's probably the stupidest thing I've ever, ever heard a sitting United States president say. I'm expecting him any day now to say that he's found the cure for cancer. Dismantle all MRI and CT machines. Problem solved, no cancer. It's just madness. He has a portion of our country even denying that the pandemic even exists or that it's a hoax, one of his favorite words. This has been extremely frustrating for healthcare workers, such as myself and my wife, who is a registered nurse. Donald Trump 
is the worst possible leader for our nation at the worst possible time. Instead of uniting us, he divides us. Instead of extinguishing hate, he fans the flames. Instead of providing calm and steady leadership in the midst of a crisis, he governs by insane, erratic tweets. The man is categorically unfit to be president, and he is especially ill-equipped to lead America into a post-pandemic world while somehow sa salvaging America's credibility as the leader of the free world. When the stakes are this high, when American lives and our very democracy is on the ballot, the only patriotic thing that any one of us can do is go to the polls and regardless of our party affiliation and regardless of our policy viewpoints, vote for Joe Biden. That's what I plan to do, and I hope and pray that a majority of Americans will do the same.